Everybody here? Is everybody here? No. We are missing oh. Abel, Rodney, yeah. and Lana. Oh, still three. Yes. Okay. So let's wait for a little while. Is it okay? Okay. Okay, let's start. Uh, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, today's uh, Operation Research 2, right? We will discuss about queuing theory, okay? So you can download the materials in Moodle, in Revoledu. The first time I learned about queuing theory was about 30 years ago in Petra. Uh, at that time, you were still water. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, I hope by the end of this lesson, uh, you'll be able to know what is input and output of queuing theory, uh, understand of the role of queuing theory, and be able to distinguish different type of queuing, okay? So, queuing problem uh, in Indonesian called antrian, right? So, What is queuing anyway? Traditional queue mean waiting line, okay? So, you know, traffic congestion, okay? Have you ever experienced no traffic congestion? Well, usually at night, yeah. At night, okay. But yeah, during, yeah. during daytime, the usual, uh, normal time, especially during peak hour in the morning or in the evening, usually you will, you will face traffic congestion, right? So uh, queuing, uh, traffic congestion is one type of queuing, okay? So yeah, even the dog knows how to queue, okay? And these are the example of, what is this, salamander, iguana, who are also queuing to get the food, right? So practically there are two types of queue, okay? One is called a uh, bulk queue, where people just, you know, get in crowd to get the service. So that's also considered as queuing? Ah, that is also called bulk queue. So queuing, meaning uh, they want to get something for the service, okay? They, they need to wait for the service. That is queuing. Okay. Another type of queue is waiting line. This is the, the, the orderly manner. Okay. So, but in, in uh, Western nation, okay, especially, uh, what we call queuing is mostly waiting line. Okay. But in Indonesia, I think mostly uh, queuing is bulk queue, isn't it? Huh. Yeah. Is, is that correct? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Not waiting line. So uh, this is the the different type of culture. Okay. Uh, the culture is uh, make it different between bulk queue and the waiting line, but both of them are still called queuing because they are still waiting for service, okay? In fact, later on, we, we can see, okay, uh, as we progress with this lesson, you can see uh, uh, how we will solve a queuing problem, how we will eliminate and reduce, and uh, eventually uh, we talk about the future of queuing, okay? And how we will use uh, queuing theory for other uh, practical application in other field. Okay, so uh, these are example of congestion in the ship pen. 
because the ship need to pass through a narrow gate. Did you see the effect here? I will draw the effect. Did you see the, the circular pattern? Can you see? Yes. Yes. So when you have a very narrow gate here, the pattern is uh, kind of circular. Okay. Even this is a ship. Okay. And then uh, you can also see the pattern that uh, going out of the uh, narrow gate, they start to have a freedom. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, they are still uh, flock flock here. You see, this is the high density pattern. And after that, uh, we'll have a uh, uh, capacity. So when we said capacity is actually uh, this part here in green. I will show you with different colors so that you will see. This is the, the one in capacity. Okay. okay. Next. Uh, queuing is also in waiting line, okay? And people try to enforce the queuing. Sometimes using uh, very strong <laughs> enforcement. So this is the policeman using a stick to move the man back into the queue in India, in Bangalore, okay? You see, they, they force the queue is not just uh, by word, but even using stick. This is very uh, interesting phenomena. Okay. And in transportation, okay, uh, you can always see the traffic congestion. Okay. Here. Uh, this is in front of the campus in Ateneo, in Katipuna. And, uh, in the MRT station, you can see a lot of uh, queuing to go inside the train. And in Singapore, they want to buy iPhone, right? And then they went to the airport to avoid queuing. And eventually they, they are uh, captured by the police because they went inside the airport to buy iPhone. So just to avoid the queuing can lead to jail. Uh, this is also funny phenomenon. And what do you think about this? Uh, when the iPad 2 start to hit Japan, okay, so hundreds of queues. Okay, so this is to be good for Apple. Right. So when we discuss about queuing, okay, queuing is pervasive. So you can see queuing in the bank, you can see queuing in the traffic flow in the road, in hospital, in government offices, in supermarket, you can see queuing. Inside the restaurant, you wait for the food or you queue for the food inside immigration office, in gasoline station, in the airport, okay? Airplane is waiting to uh, enter the airport, to enter the runway. Inside the parking lot, uh, car are queuing to enter the parking lot. Hey, music in the playlist is also queuing to, to be played. Okay. When you create a to-do list, it's the same thing. These are uh, uh, tasks that queuing to be performed. When you ride in the Disneyland or amusement center, you still need to queue. The same thing in, in the movie theater, you, you, you uh, queue to get the ticket. I'm not sure in Petra, so how about enrollment? If you want to register for your course, do you still queue? No more. 
So, uh, document in offices, okay, they are queuing in stock to be uh, signed by some bosses. The files also queuing to be put into uh, graphical user interface. The same thing with queuing for uh, some product into a machine. So can you give other example of queuing that you can think of? Waiting to be admitted by Mr. Technomo in the waiting room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a queue, right? That, actually, there is no queue, but that's <clears throat> kind of queuing. And probably like uh, orders in online shops. Mm, order in online shop is also a part of queuing because you need to wait. But, uh, going to the toilet. Going to the toilet, are... yes. Uh, sometimes public toilet uh, need to queue. What else? Any other examples of queuing that? Or probably the negative. Is there any one of you who never see any queue? No one. Mm. Oh, well, like, I don't know. I think oh, it, there's just a queue, uh, another form of queue, but in an ordered queue, like when, uh, when they distribute the, what is it called? Bantuan Bencana or something. Okay, the donation, right? Yeah, donations. Like right. They always like fight with each other because okay. they're afraid of not getting the donations. Yeah, the same thing with now, nowadays people are queuing to get vaccination, right? For the COVID. Right. So, what are the uh, generic queuing problems? Okay. Uh, number one is too many servers. Why this is a problem? Because too many servers mean cost, right? So say you, you create a supermarket or you, you own a supermarket. If you have too many servers, yes, it will give a rapid service, but some, some workers are idle, okay? And some equipment are underutilized. So you invest on something that is not really efficient. So efficiency is one queuing problem, okay? But another problem is too little server. So it will create long queue. Uh, very impatient customer. And when the customer is impatient, they, they may go out and do not buy anymore. They get angry, right? Then you, you lost opportunity for business. Okay. And if you have a shop floor for your machine and it is very congested, so again, a problem of inefficiency. Okay. So the machine cannot work properly because of congestion. So basically, in queuing problem, you try to balance, you try to optimize, right? Not too many server, not too little server. What is the the managerial judgment of balancing okay, uh, the number of server compared to the customers. Okay, so this is the actual queuing problem. So uh, if you look at the queuing problem as economic loss, okay. If the customer is waiting, example, uh, the airplane that waiting to land okay, will consume a lot of fuel while waiting per minute. How many gallon of uh, fuel will be wasted in the air just to wait for the runway? Okay. The same thing with the food product; it may spoil. It takes too long to reach the customer, right? So as a business, you lost 
uh, customers if they angry to your business because they queue too long, right? So uh, queuing is actually very huge business okay? all over the world. In fact, if you can optimize the queue in certain business, say in a restaurant, like Yoshinoya, for example, they, they try to optimize the queue okay, of uh, uh, going from uh, the customer to the server to the cook, right? And come back to the customer service. So they reduce the distance. Okay? Then eventually it will uh, improve the efficiency of general and it improve uh, a lot of profit okay, for the business. Now, give me at least 25 ideas. Uh, how many are you now? So that means uh, you are six person. So at least uh, five ideas per person, right? So give me 25 ideas. Okay, why you do not want to queue? Right, we type or we just share like this? You just share like this. Mm. The first is from all of us, right? Yeah, of people. course, from all of you. So each of you uh, give me five reasons. Uh, wasting time, right? Wasting yeah. time. Yeah. Hey, that <laughs> hell. Uh, I mean, I'm going in first. <laughs> so, so, good. Yeah. Next. Uh, tiring. Tiring, yeah. Boring. 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 Three. Make cause an accident. Make cause an accident, why? Because, like, usually after the congestion, like in traffic, people tend to speed up. So it oh. may increase the risk of getting an accident. Okay. Because someone might steal your place, even though you are uh, quiet, but some people just pop out from nowhere and take your place. Okay. Inefficient. Yes, inefficient. Yes. Next. Costing money, it might cost money. Yeah, it costs money, correct. So imagine what, what a, a system or what business are you in? And then is there any queue there? And why you don't want that queue? Um, well, like for example, in, a, in, in my, what I heard from my mom, okay. uh, like, she is still um, in the business like uh, like uh, related to containers and uh, shipping containers. So mm -hmm. yeah, we don't want to queue so so long for con shipping containers because they, we have the marriage uh, uh, fees. If, we, if the if the queue is too long, it's the harbor, yes. and that might cost us a lot of money and then right, right. also where if the queue for the container is too long then the materials cannot reach the factory soon enough might right. run out and then the if material run out then the factory must stop for a while and then starting the factory when the materials arrive it's uh, yes, takes a lot, take of, a lot of money yes. creates another queuing also correct that's excellent example, right? Oh, who did not uh, recite yet? Any ideas uh, why you don't want queuing? Give me example of the business. That you can- uh, Deadline? Uh, in Indonesia, there's a deadline for paying taxes, but usually there's a long queue in the bank, so you cannot pay near the deadline. Ah, paying taxes because of the deadline. Yes. 
So you may you have a higher chance to get a penalty because you're late. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Why why people pay taxes in the bank by queuing? That's that's something I cannot understand. Uh, for some reason, I believe like yeah, for some taxes you cannot pay in the ATM machine. You must go to the teller. Therefore, there's long queue for that. Oh, you cannot do it online. For some taxes. Oh really? What kind of taxes? Uh, I'm not really sure because it's not me who do it. So, okay. <laughs> but that's what I heard. Okay. Uh, as far as I know, uh, if it's PPN and PPH, you can do it online. And then. And yeah, so uh, yeah, my my dad only taught me how to do those two taxes online. So yeah, I also curious the about the taxes that Lillian is talking about. Mm. Because, I think like the yearly. Oh, the, uh, uh, SPT. Yes, I think. Mm. Okay. Any any other uh, queuing system that you experience in your life? Something that you don't like. Um, currently queuing for my car to be taken to a car uh, like by my oh. mechanic okay. because the, the because it's just like a home garage like okay. like. Uh, and it and he handles everything by himself right like i i queued for i think al almost a month now because wow. he's very busy and many cars uh he handled many cars by his own so oh that's yeah. that's interesting because why you keep using that service if the service is already very bad is there any well, competitor or no? It's like it's like yeah. He he can do it uh, with uh, like uh, uh, less expensive or cheaper, but oh, the price yeah, is quite good at what he's doing. Okay, price and quality. Uh, what about uh, it? Could be deadly if you want an organ transplant. And you you oh, yes. the organs. Correct. 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 Okay, good. So you can start to see uh, queuing is a problem. This is this is my my point in the discussion, right? So and uh, the cost of queuing can be deadly, as I will mention, right? So sometimes queuing can be beneficial and of course uh, learning queuing theory is also very beneficial okay at least three things okay one is uh, why we learn queuing theory because we want to predict the queue length and the waiting time and having queuing theory we will be able to optimize the queue okay by saying optimizing here meaning we want to minimize the cost Okay, so uh, minimize the total cost. So we don't want to have too many server and we don't want to lose customers. So we, not, we need to balance. Okay. And uh, second reason why we want to learn queuing theory, okay. the benefit of queuing theory is to create efficient, uh, cost-effective workflow. Okay. So, Again, you want to provide good service. At the same time, you, you want to reduce the opportunity cost. And of course, the cost of the server, which is probably the most expensive part. And learning queuing theory is also uh, good to minimize the delay and congestion okay, to improve the traffic flow. Okay. So can you, Think of uh, 
10, at least 10 scenarios, okay? When the queuing is actually good and identify for whom this is good. Okay, so it's of you too. Queuing in supermarkets. Good for whom? Good for the this um the the oh, cashier. Good for the cashier. Why? Because it's not crowded. Hey, I don't I don't get it. Because um, for example, I live in Surabaya Barat. Um, there's a famous supermarket called Hockey, and then if they they are always crowded. If there are no queue, there will be a bulk queue, right? And that's that will be very very crowded. Oh no no, my question is uh, when queuing is good. Oh, I get it. Okay, sorry sorry. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, queuing uh -huh. is good when you demand stuff that need detail, uh, to, that need to pay attention to detail. Like for example, when you go to a jewelry shop, you have a specification like you want you want it to be 20% cold. The, uh, usually, that, uh, the cutter of the jewelry is divided into two between 30 and 40 percent, or 70 and 75 percent, and also the other details. It includes a lot of uh, focus to understand what the consumer wants. So when you uh, involve the detail such that you need to queue so that it can be done uh, in a bit better result. Okay. So you are willing to queue uh, to get the better explanation. That's what you you mean. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And is there any other examples or other scenario that queuing is good? I think if you queue. In the toilet, mm -hmm. in, in the toilet. So the Isn't first person bad? who queue will go first. Yeah, because but that... if you, if, because if someone cut your line, you may have to hold it. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. I I understand your your point. So. So. Your point is because in Indonesia there is no no waiting line. Is that is that what you you mean? Yes. So people can cut the, the line easily. Yes. Oh, okay. So that's why queuing is good. In this case, what you mean queuing is a waiting line, uh, orderly. Because. Yes. Okay. Right now, the situation is park queue. Okay. I can't see how it would be good <laughs> in any way. Okay. I, 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 I started to understand what Michelle was uh, talking a while ago. <laughs> okay. So the situation is uh, right now in Indonesia, many barbecue. And when you said there is a waiting line, that will be good. Yes. Okay. So what I mean by this question, when queuing is good, is there is a waiting line and this is not good. And question is, when a waiting line is good? Okay, I give you an example so that you, you can see. Uh, this one is an example, a queuing, okay? That they want to buy iPad, right? So in this case, the queuing is good, not for the customer, but is good for the uh the manufacturer or the company which is uh, apple okay because the long queue represent the high demand for 
the iPad. So if you have a restaurant and there are a long queue to, to, to enter your restaurant in waiting line, people will start to see that, oh, your restaurant is made probably have a good food. So the image of queuing create a good things for your business. So I, I hope you understand the question here. So when queuing is good, can you identify? Anyone? Nobody? Still cannot think of a good form of queuing. <laughs> beneficial queuing. What is beneficial queuing? What is beneficial queuing? <laughs> um, probably a queue is good. Where you're making a priority list, like a to-do list, that's a good queue, right? Good for, so that good for good for yourself and also good okay. for the for the maybe a company that you're working for because like when you have a, 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 a like a list of priorities you can uh, group which uh, type of job there is a uh, highly urgent or very important so that everything can run on a schedule to avoid other uh, unintended or unwanted cues. Mm -hmm. I think. So that's a queue, like yes. there is a queue, which is a to-do list to avoid mm -hmm. queues like in the warehouse, queues in the right. something. So like I, I can start to uh, generalize uh, this discussion that queuing is good if we can put it into order. That's what you mean, right? So uh, in the beginning, there is kind of bulk queue that things are disorder. When you start to make it order, uh, then you think it is better because there is a kind of priority. Is that, is that so? Um, I think so. I think so. Mm -hmm. How about perception? Perception of queuing. Because queuing can be psychological, you know. So when you say queuing, is that something good or bad? I think it's good when there's too many demands. So when there are too many demands, you, you think that it is good? Because, uh, yeah, like Nyoto said, uh, it's good to put in order. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Yeah. Okay. But when, when there are many demand, that means uh, the perception is, oh, probably this is good. Right? You don't know, but because th there are so many demands, then you start to think that probably this is good. Then you start to try. Okay. Oh, just like when there's a, uh, there's, there's a long queue in a restaurant, that means that uh, the restaurant is good. Something probably. Like right. So oh. If there is long queue in the restaurant, then probably could. And there are, there are long queue in certain products, okay? Like a, a new electronic product like iPad, then you will start to think, oh, probably that is good. I want to buy it. Or there are a lot of people talking about certain uh, fashion or certain games. Then you start to think probably that is good, right? Okay, so uh, 
in this lesson, this is just a beginning. So we will discuss later on about management of queuing system. Okay. In management of queuing system, usually we are interested in one or more of the following. Okay. First, you want to evaluate the system performance. Okay. Second, you want to predict okay, what will be the future system performance. And then the third one, you want to compare okay, the performance of different alternative queuing system. So you will have some proposed system, then you will have the current existing condition. Then you compare between the two. Okay, so this is always the case. So mostly you, you will say, if I do nothing to the existing system, this is the, the costing okay? and this is the benefit. If I propose something, okay, and this is the, the new costing and this is the new benefit, then you compare, okay, so, in doing queuing management, that is the one that you need to do, making comparison. Okay. So the following are example of queuing problems. Okay. So for example, you want to ask how many additional server. Okay. Now you have, say, you own a supermarket. Okay. Now the question is, how many additional servers should I employ? to reduce the proportion of customer who wait longer than one minute to less than 10%. Another example in priority queue, for example, if we want to introduce priority for the first class customer, what will be the effect to the waiting time? Okay, so say you have a doctor uh, or hospital, okay? or a factory. Okay. Now, how much should the waiting room be enlarged to reduce the proportion of customer turn away to less than one in 10? Now, these are example of a uh, common problem. How much is the improvement in service can be accomplished if okay, the length of service time is shortened from five minutes to three minutes? Okay. Reduction of just two minutes. What is the actual improvement in service? Uh, you need to know that queuing is nonlinear problem. Okay, so when you reduce just a small amount of uh, service time, okay, the the effect is not just linear; it can be nonlinear and triple double, and so on. Okay. So then you start to think, would it be cheaper to employ another server or actually increase the size of the waiting room? Okay. So if you have a two class of customer, can we give a quality of service? Okay. Is it cheaply achieved by providing separate group or server to each class or by providing a single group to serve both classes? So these are examples of common problems okay, related to Q. Is there any advantage in keeping exclusivity of service in the counter? For example, a priority line for uh, elderly okay, or priority line for uh, privileged, use, uh, privileged customers. You see in the airport, usually there is a privileged card holder, right? Now, what is the probability that the customer will arrive when the server is busy? So this question related to how many servers should I provide? Okay. How many additional servers should we employ to guarantee certain probability, say 95% probability that the maximum average queue length will be only three people. In the US, you can start to see that uh, uh, certain supermarket, okay, like Walmart, for example, will have a rule that 
if the number of Q length is more than three, okay, then they will ring the bell and the server who is doing anything else will stop doing and start to go to the cashier and serve as a cashier. This is just an example. Okay, uh, what is the limit of the lowest Q length that we can achieve? See, if you have a parking space, how many parking space should you provide to make sure that arriving customer will find parking 99% of the time? Okay. And what is the mean length of time for the customer to wait at the counter for the service? What is the average of total amount of time the customer spend in the store? Usually, this is related to the business, meaning that uh, the more time the customer spend in your store, the higher probability that they will buy. Say, if you have a taxi stand, okay. So, what is the distribution of the number of customer waiting for the taxis? Okay. What is the probability that there are taxis waiting for the customers and so on? So these are again example of queuing problems. Now, to solve all those problems, okay, of course you need to measure the performance. Okay, getting the performance meaning you get the numerical values, okay, and to get that numerical values you have at least four ways four ways of doing. Number one is direct observation. Okay. We will learn that in the, in the next uh, slide, in the basic queuing theory. We will use direct observation and then we calculate the system statistic. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, we can also uh, measure the queuing based on queuing theory. Okay. I will not discuss the derivation of queuing theory in this class. Okay. So if you want to learn the derivation of the queuing theory, read the book. Okay. There are uh, reference, reference books there that you can read. How, how this formula was derived to get that formula, which is based on Markov chain anyway. Okay. So the third method is to use simulation. Again, simulation we will not discuss in this class. Probably in the uh, next semester, you can ask for uh, another class because simulation is very big, okay? Uh, but I will discuss a queuing rule of thumb. This is a kind of uh, trick that you can calculate the queue very easily, okay? This is just a rule of thumb that you can measure. Uh, just use calculator without computer. Okay. So, if you look at the queuing system, <clears throat> okay, system must have input and output, right? So the queuing system have two input. One is the customer, the second is the services. Okay? And the output is the measurement, the performance measurement. Okay? So we call this measurement of effectiveness, MOE, or operating characteristic. Now, the two input are the customers and service. If you think about this, the customer represent the demand. Okay? The service represent the supply. So if you think about that, that customer represent demand, service represent supply, then you start to think that queuing system is not just merely queuing system. You can start to generalize. Okay? Any system can be taught as a queuing system. Okay, so economy, the whole economy is based on demand and supply. So then you can start to see this is economy as a queuing system. Say logistic distribution system, okay, like uh, who, who was discussing about container a while ago, right? So these are, again, based on demand and supply, right? 
So the customer and the service. Again, you can use queuing uh, system or queuing theory to solve this problem. So any part okay, that you can think of, there is an input okay, that the customer is waiting to be served. Okay? Then you can start to connect this part with another part. Then it will become uh, a network of queuing system. Uh, long time ago, I created the queuing tutorial. I'm not sure it's still working. Some are still working, some are not. So you can start to check this website in Revoledo. Okay. And there are several calculator there that I develop that you can also use. Okay. Without this screen calculator, you can also uh, see the slide and then calculate by hand or use uh, Excel, or you can create your own program. But there is a queuing calculator online that I created. So practically, you can just use that. OK, until here, is there any question? This is the end of the first slide. So far, so good, sir. So far, so good. So what did you learn? Give me feedback. Queuing. Uh, like ordered or unordered is just a difference between a bulk queue or uh, what is it called? Waiting line. line. Waiting, waiting line. line. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have input from customers, then you can make it as a queuing system. Customers and service. Demand. Okay. Okay. As long as you have supply and demand. So correct. Yeah. Right. Uh, and queuing uh, is yes. not always uh, queuing is sometimes good and sometimes we just don't want any queues. That's what I learned. Okay. Most mostly you don't like queue, right? Yeah. Certain queue are uh, beneficial for certain user. Correct. So, for example, queuing in restaurant. Okay. The, the owner of the restaurant probably think it's good because it creates some kind of perception of fame, right? But at the same time, it's not good for the customer. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to get feedback from uh, you again. Uh, two more. Lillian, Darin, can you give me feedback? What did you learn? The same like Nyoto, like there's a good and bad, like there's a good and there's a bad queue. Okay. So what is queuing in 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 your in your thinking? At first, I was thinking like, like the waiting line, but after this, I just realized that actually bulk queue is a queue. You start to think that. Yes. Right, because. Bulk queue is also demand and supply, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Darin. Yeah, learn how to calculate something. What did you calculate? There is no calculation here. Yeah, little, little. Huh? What did calculate about the time, maybe? And yeah, we have to make it as efficient as possible. Like if the demand is big, yeah, we have to supply more. But if the demand is low, yeah, supply less like that. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, about the service, yeah, about that, I think. Erin, this is your lecture asking you, please respond seriously, okay? I respond, Eugene. Okay, Eugene, you have some opinion, please. Maybe Eugene want to think. 
Eugene, you, you have some feedback, please. Okay, sir. Then I'll, uh, yeah, this is what's on my mind. So when you uh, tell me that we're going to learn about gene theory, I actually really interested because I've been uh, several times got a problem with this question, like how to solve uh, inefficiency in queuing, such as right. in supermarket and stuff. And yeah, I think I will find the method to solve it here. Right. So because yeah, for uh, it sounds simple, but I think it's important. And yeah, I haven't been able to answer it. Okay. So uh, until now, and I, I hope I hope by this twelve lesson you will be able to answer that. Okay. Okay. And the end of twelve lesson you will start to see something different. That oh, I was I'm able to solve it. And then when you finish this twelve lesson, what I will give you is frustration. Excuse me. Excuse me. My frustration, right? <laughs> so. Once you know something and the society does not behave like what you know, you will feel frustrated because, come on, this is so easy, you can solve it, but nobody wants it. Then you start to start to feel frustration, just like me. Traffic congestion can be solved. We know the solution. We have the model, okay? We know how to solve it, but we don't know how to convince people that we know. So you're saying we can actually clear our congestions in Jakarta? Sure. Hmm. Hmm, right? Okay. They don't want it. Okay. Why? Why why don't they want to be? Uh, the budget or maybe it's hiring? It's a mindset problem rather than the budget problem. It's a mindset. Okay. Once you learn about the skewing theory, later on we discuss about Markov chain, about uh, maximum entropy, and uh, about IFN, the, the ideal flow network, then you start to see, oh, yes, we can solve it. Real. This is what real. But uh, then you start to see, Oh, why they don't want it? <laughs> okay, then you start to wonder. So I hope by teaching this to you, you start to start to spread the word. Hey, you can solve it. Hey, we can solve this. Okay, so we need more people. To, we need uh, to convince more people practically. Abel, you want to say something? I think uh, it could, I, from what I see with the example of queuing problems slide, like it's extremely useful. I don't see a way where uh, it's not useful. Okay. So I hope this is the, the first lesson for me is just to motivate you. Okay. This is beneficial for you. I hope you will learn more about this. And you see there are a lot of, uh, if you look at the slide, you will see, Oh, a lot of formulas. Okay. And if you learn the queuing theory proper, you will learn the derivation. And I hide this derivation from you deliberately. Okay. Because too much mathematics. But at the same time, okay, I, I said, look, if you want to know the derivation, you just read by yourself. And if you want, if you can, if you read, you don't understand, you can ask me. In private, otherwise, uh, it will be a waste of time just to derive mathematically, right? Most of you will not like it anyway. Okay, so let's go to the second lesson. Or you want to, to stop for a while? No, no, let's continue with this. Let's continue, okay. Okay, let's continue. The second lesson is basic queuing theory. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is like 60 slides. 
So in here, we will discuss about uh, the elements of queuing, okay? And then uh, how we will discuss uh, uh, data collection in queuing, okay? So these are the overview of what we will learn. So uh, of course, I will define what is queuing and queuing theory, arrival distribution, okay? Surface time distribution. We discuss about candle notation, measurement of effectiveness and steady state, and fundamental queuing formula and queuing rule of thumb, okay? So, I hope by the end of this uh, slide, you will know what is the input and output of queuing theory, and you understand the element of queuing theory, and you know how to state the fundamental queuing formula or little formula. Okay, uh, this is the same as uh, uh, earlier to get the numerical value of performance, uh, okay, measure of the performance. You can have a different type of uh, technique. Okay, and in here we'll discuss about direct observation. Right, so now let's look at the detail, okay? In the input, there are customer and service, right? The demand and supply. So the customer is basically, we want to know about two, two parts, okay? One is the arrival process. How the customer arrive in the queuing system? Okay. So in this case, you want to know the arrival rate and the pattern, the distribution of the arrival. Okay. Second is what is the population of the customer? Are they finite or infinite? Okay. Uh, second part is the service, the supply part. Okay. What is again the, the service process? What is the service rate? What is the distribution pattern of the service rate? And then the facility configuration, is there parallel, serial, or a single server? Okay. What is the uh, waiting capacity? And what is the service discipline? Is that uh, first in, first out, or uh, last in, first out, and so on? Okay. So let's discuss that one by one. Okay. Again, uh, we discussed... Uh, uh, in the previous slide, that queuing can be generalized, okay, as long as you can think in terms of demand and supply. Okay, so again, in the restaurant, there is a kind of uh, network, okay, say the order is one node, okay, and then from the order, they will put into the cook, okay, so and then uh, go to the service custom. Uh, Customer service, okay, and then go to the cashier. Okay, when the when the customer eat finish, then then the server will start to clean. Okay, and there is also uh, some note to purchase the material. For example, the the ingredient, the raw ingredient, so that they can cook again. So all of these uh, notes, okay, are a queuing system that you can start to connect into a queuing network. Now, when we say customers, okay, you think in terms of users, okay? So you define customer as an entity. The entity can be people, can be job, can be vehicles, can be whatever, okay? Entity that's seeking service. Okay, think about customer as entity that's seeking service. And think about server as anyone or anything that provides service. Okay, so when we say demand and supply, one is seeking service, the other one is providing service. Then you can start to see we can use queuing for anything. Say government. Right? They provide service. What is the service of government? Anyone? 
by the way. I mean, public health care and stuff like that. Okay, so for example, you go to government office, say city government. Why you go to city government office? What for? To register, to, uh, to get KTP. Okay, to get your national ID, to get, get passport, license, right? To get your business license. So those are services of the government, isn't it? The licensing, right? And you as the customer are seeking that service, correct? So, um, yes. Yes. So the government provide highway, okay? Yes, but when you go to the thing in terms of queuing, okay? So. The queuing means the system that you seek for service and the uh, server is the one that provides service. If the government pro provides highway, what is this service? Say a tollway, is that a, who is the customer in this case? In highway, what is the customer? Everybody that uses the highway? Correct. Or... Correct. And, and who are the servers? Say you in the road, okay, not the not highway. In the road, who are the server? The road? The road itself, the, the, the lane, the lane width, the road width is the server. Can you? Yes. Okay. The server is not always human. Oh, okay. Okay, now you start to see. Okay? okay. So when you start to see, oh, not just anyone, but also anything that provides service. Okay, server is not always human. The same thing, customer is not always human, okay? Can you start to see? <clears throat> Okay, so I give you an example. You go to a party, okay? In the party, there is a, a free food, right? So you, you, you get the food from the table, right? And you can eat all you can, right? And there is a queue to get the food. What is the service? Who are the customer and who are the server? It's you are the customer and you are the, you are serving yourself. <laughs> no, <laughs> you are the customer, correct, but you are not serving yourself. The food? No, the food is the service. The server is the all you can eat system. Yes. No, the server is the table, the side of the table. Can you see that? If you provide two sides of the table, then you have two server. If you have many sides of the table of the same food, then you have many servers. If you have only one side of the table, then people will queue in one side only. Can you start to see that? So identify the server is also in, in, important, you know. Without identifying the server, you will not know. Then you will think, oh, I'm the one who serve. In fact, you are not the one who serve. It's the table. Okay, the one that providing the service. Okay, so say you have a gasoline station. Okay, in Indonesia, gasoline station is not self-service, right? So there is still one or two person who, who serve you, correct? So 
Now, if there is what is called self service gasoline station, my question is who is the server? Uh, the gas thing, the one that. The... Yes, the gas. Uh, the gas. Whatever that's called. <laughs> right. So. For each unit of the gas uh, station, that is the one that provides the service, right? So, yes, you are the one who, who, who do all the things, okay? But at the same time, it's the facility matters. Now, another question for you. Uh, Say you have a facility to drop, okay? To drop your children, okay? To, to drop a children in the school, and then the, say the car will stop in the school, drop the children, and then go. So the customer is clear, right? The car want to drop the children, and what is the service to drop the children? Now the question is. Who is the server in this case? Uh, the dropping off place? Correct. The dropping off place. Okay. So the length of the dropping off place is the server. Okay. By providing longer, you will create more server. Okay longer dropping of lane will provide more server. It, identifying the server is very important. Okay. So now let's go to the detail of traditional queuing system. Okay. What customer do in the queuing system? First customer arrive, right? The customer arrives. So in this case, you have certain distribution of arrival and the rate of arrival. Next, the customer is waiting in a waiting line to be served. So when they arrive, okay, they are waiting. So, well, they are waiting if the server is not idle. If the server is idle, of course, there is no waiting, correct? Next, the third step is after they wait, okay, the customer is being served, okay? And then the last part is, of course, the customer exit for the, from the system or go to the next stage of the queuing system. Okay, now the bulky part, okay, of the queuing system that the customer feel is actually on the waiting, but the actual transfer of information, transfer of service is actually when the customer is being served. This is the third part, okay? In here, the customer transfer the information to the server. For example, oh, I want to place an order, okay? This is the time, the item that I want to purchase. Oh, this is my ID, right? This is the customer transfer in, transfer the information from the customer to the server. This is the first step. Second step, the server will input the customer data, probably by scanning, by typing, okay? Any method, see? The third is the customer, the server will start to do the order processing. Okay, say preparing the items, say the cashier will get the money, okay, or do some order processing. And then the, the, the last step is to transfer the material or the information from the server to the customer. So giving the receipt, the chains, okay, the food or the document. Can you see that? 
So what is the most important part here that I want to highlight is the, the word information and material. Okay, you need to be able to distinguish between material and information. Okay, why? Because information can be transferred before they enter the queuing system. The information okay, can be transferred without actually server inputting that customer data. For example, they do it online, right? So the only transfer that need okay, is actually transfer of material, not transfer of information. Can you see that? Okay, give me your thought first before I go further. How the queuing can be reduce how the queue can be eliminated simply by changing the way of your thinking about queuing. Give me an example of queue, anyone? Hello, are you still there? Making passport. Making passport. My question to you, passport is information or material? Material. <laughs> Again, passport is information or material? Material. Information. Both? Question mark. <laughs> Think about it. Material. Okay, let's vote. Who said material? Nyoto. Lilian Nyoto. Abel. Abel. Eugene. Eugene. Oh, four. Who said material? Passport is material. Oh. I guess e passport is information, right? But. <laughs> Like your name, your birthday, or something. <laughs> abused, abused. Abused. Look, <laughs> look. Passport is information. No question to you now. Money, money is information or material. Money is information or material. Material, right? <laughs> well, this is another information. What what info do you get with money? It's like like the, the oh, it's the hero of Indonesia. That's a good information, I guess. You see, I, I, I told you after you know what I'm telling you, you start to start to think, you start to think different way. Okay, then you start to, to be frustrated. <clears throat> money is information here. How? Oh, how money is information. Money is not material. That's why you can create money. That's why you can create what is called Bitcoin. Okay? So your passport is not material. Your passport is information. Your national ID, KTP, is not material. It's information. Most of government services are information. Now, this kind of lecture is material or inform information? Information. Info. Now, I'm asking you, key. Key. No, I don't have key. The key. 
the key to the the door information or material i'm guessing information why uh Why key is information? Um, because it's you can like a key is a, a program like it is made for one keyhole like a, a set of like, no key so. is actual information. That embedded in the in the material you see when you 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 go to the key maker okay what they do is actually measuring the the information there and then use the tool to 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 cut the key right yes so that is information that they cut into the material those are numbers mm -hmm. numbers are information so that means the same numbers you can you can put it into a different type of key. So say for example, now you have a hotel, okay? You don't need to have a key. You don't need to have a registration to to go to the hotel and to go to the lobby to get the key, right? So you can register online. You get the the code, which is the key. You can go to the hotel and put the passcode as your key. And then the hotel room will open just for you. Correct? Correct or not? Uh, yeah. In that case, the key is information, not material. Many jobs are actually information, not materials. Okay. When you start to realize this, for example, you, you go to McDonald's and you buy hamburger. Okay. Majority of the uh, time that you use is actually to transfer the information, isn't it? Oh, I want to place my order. Okay. This is the money. Okay. So, the actual things that matter is actually the transfer of material, which is the hamburger to you. Not the transfer of information. So by separating the information from the materials, then you can start to reduce the, the queue. In fact, you can also eliminate the queue totally. So many government jobs that create traffic congestion is actually useless, is inefficient because they are actually giving information, not material, isn't it? So in that case, you don't need to queue. You just give the, the information over the internet. That's it. Then there is no more congestion. Is that correct? Tell me what you think. I talk like this since 2010, 2009. Okay, anywhere in the world. And uh, people at that time, before COVID, right? People will think that I'm crazy. Okay. But now after COVID, people think starting to say, oh, what I'm telling is like prediction. It's happening. See, people start start to see that oh, work from home is is okay. Teaching from uh, home online is fine. Okay, at that time people laugh because I said, look, is this information or material? If this is information, you don't need to come. Okay. If it is material, yes. 
is essential. Now you start to see. Okay, tell me, give me feedback. Eugene. Well, yeah, looks like this will change my perception about material and information. <laughs> Abel, you have some 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 thought. Mm, well, I don't really know what to say. But, yeah. Can you distinguish material and information? Well, yes. <laughs> now I can. Now you can. Nato. Yes, sir. No problem to distinguish material and information? Mm. Think so. Okay. Think so. so Lillian, what do you think about queuing? Uh, something that can be reduced. Now you start to see? Yes. How? Uh, from the like you divide the information and the material so I mean like if it's information then I believe there will be some other alternative beside the queuing system Correct. but in material I guess you must do it hand in hand I guess like Correct. in person Correct. now you can start to see hey I can solve the queuing problem isn't it no, <laughs> it's uh, still gonna be challenging. <laughs> is, okay, it is challenging, but at the same time, now you start to see there is a hope, right? Yes, there is a hope. Okay, uh, Darin, you want to say something? I don't think so, sir. Okay, Helen. Yeah, it's good for now. I think we need to learn more. <laughs> okay, so. Let's continue. Okay, so so what is queuing theory anyway? Right. So queuing theory was started in 1917 by Arlan for a telephone system. Okay, in Scandinavia. So this is a body of knowledge dealing with waiting line. Okay, so. Then it start to create a, a mathematical model for the system to provide the service to customer who arrive uh, randomly, okay? and also uh, service time is also random. Okay? Now this is an example of queuing model. So. The first part there is okay, the customer arrives here, and then there's a waiting line, okay? And then there is a customer who is uh, being served here by the server. After that, the customer leaves. So this is a single server uh, queuing model, okay? Another, is a multi-server, another uh, queuing model is a multi-server. So this is, I will call this A, and I will call this B, okay? So my question to you, which one is better performance, A or B? And tell me why, opinion. What is your opinion? Which one is better? In here, in A, customer arrive, and then there is only one waiting line. Okay? The waiting line can be very long, like this. Okay. And, and then the, 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 the customer will be served uh, okay, to the, the 
parallel solver here. In B, okay, there are many waiting lines, one for each server. Okay, so which one has better performance, A or B? B. Why? In terms so, of so the waiting line wouldn't be like it's uh, it's divided. Yeah, the waiting line is divided, so the waiting line is shorter. Yes. Yeah, in term of the waiting length, it's shorter. But, but it, I guess. But I guess when the length of the waiting line is shorter, then customers would be like, "Oh, okay, not, not, not uh, like the queue is not very long after all." But it's not actually better performance, right? It's not actually better performance in terms of queuing time. Mm. In terms of the delay, okay, A is probably better. Okay, this A in terms of the delay is actually better. But in terms of uh, waiting length, okay, B is probably better. Why A is better in terms of the time? Sure, what do you mean by A is better in delay? What is the delay you mean? Waiting time. Oh, okay. Okay, when I say delay in the queuing, it's called uh, waiting time. So the waiting time in A is better because now uh, each of them will serve in a parallel position. Okay, while in B, some some queue is very long some queue is just short right so sometimes there is no no queue in one server so in that case uh, overall performance is not necessarily better in b okay but again uh, this is just in terms of three three server if you have a 20 or 30 server parallel server like this not necessarily not necessarily a or b because uh, the distance in a walking distance from from the the line to the server is also matter you know right so <clears throat> you need to do a simulation if you want to compute this now, later on, when we discuss about uh, uh, queuing theory, okay. So this A is called MMS. Okay. Markovian, Markovian, many server. This B is called MM1. So Markovian, Markovian, just one server. Yes, you have many, but uh, each of these is just one server. So you have uh, N multiplied by uh, um, one server. In here is called MM1. Later on. Huh? Is there any question until here? Okay, I, I will discuss about the MM something uh, later when we discuss about candle notation. So, yeah, so candle uh, notation in 1953, Kendall uh, is a British uh, scientist, suggested a notation that probably will be helpful to classify a wide variety of different waiting lines. Okay, so the he suggested three letters A B K. A is the uh, probability distribution of the arrival. B is the probability distribution of the service time, and then K in here is the the number of channel, the number of server. So 
The commonly used letter for position A and B are M, D, and G. So then you will have M, M, one, for example. M, D, one, or a G, G, one. This is these are the example. What is the meaning? M is called a Poisson process or a Markovian. This is mean uh, your arrival is random. Okay. D represent deterministic or constant. For example, you have machine. Okay. Say a traffic signal. Usually we have M D one because the arrival is random. The traffic signal itself is deterministic, is always constant, and you have only one server. And G is general probability distribution, meaning that uh, usually normal distribution. Okay. When we said M is Markovian, this is mostly Poisson distribution. Uh, okay, before continuing, when I said normal distribution, Poisson distribution, do you understand? Hello, did you take a statistic? Engineering uh, statistics? Yeah, we did. You did? Yeah. So meaning that Poisson, dis dis Poisson distribution is okay with you? Hopefully. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Uh, I hope. I hope. No, normal distribution is okay with you, right? It's the one with the bell shape, right? Correct. Very good. So that in that case, okay. So good. <clears throat> so these are example DD one, meaning that there is no queue unless there is a arrival rate is larger than service time. So deterministic, deterministic, and one server. Okay. MMS meaning random arrival, random service time, and S number of server. Okay. MDS is a traffic signal system with the S number of server. Okay. Say DMS is an appointment system. So the arrival is deterministic. The customer arrives at certain time only. But the uh, service time is random. Okay, uh, MG one. This is an example of random arrival, and then service time is uh, general service time with mean and variance. So look at this. <clears throat> when how I will know this is random or not, right? So when the mean is equal to variance, then it is random. Or when the mean is close to variance, in this case, the coefficient variation is one, okay? But when the variance is close to zero, or the coefficient variation is zero, then it is deterministic. Any question here? Can you distinguish between deterministic and random? Random means you don't know when will arrive, right? Uh, deterministic means constant. Okay. General distribution means you you know uh, the mean and the variance. As simple as that. Okay, so if you know the mean and the variance, then you need to use a general distribution. If you don't know the, the variance and you know only the mean, then you'd start to think in terms of arrival rate or service rate in a portion distribution. Okay, next is the population, the potential user that may arise for seeking the service. What is their size? Are they infinite or finite? Okay. See, your customer are the machine. 
in the factory, right? So the number of machine in your factory is finite. Say only 10. In this case, uh, will be totally different from uh, a queuing from the general population which is infinite. Okay, so in that case, uh, the way we compute, okay, the formula will be different. Now, the arrival. The arrival is basically inflow. Okay. The arrival of the customer over time is called arrival rate. Okay. Usually, uh, you compute as the customer per hour, the number of customer per hour, say the number of vehicles per hour. So what is this? This is called flow, right? So. Flow is equal to the number of customer per time. Okay. Now, say you have vehicles. So going going to that direction. Okay. Now, let me get another color here. So this is the bumper. And this is the bumper. So the time distance, okay, the time distance between bumper to bumper, this is called headway. Okay. The term headway here represents the, the time distance bumper to bumper. So in another word, this is inter-arrival rate. Of course, because this is time distance, so we call it, uh, the unit is minute or seconds. Okay, so I will give notation headway. So the, the flow, the average flow is equal to one over the average headway. So the arrival rate, okay, is the total number of customer arriving in n unit of time divided by n unit of time. The headway is just the, the reciprocal of the flow on average. So the customer represent the demand, represent the flow, okay? You can also think customer in terms of customer arrival distribution. Okay. So now the three of them are actually the same thing. Okay. When I say demand is the same as the flow, as the same as customer. When I said headway, that means one over the flow. Until here, any question? Tell me what did you just learned. I need to get the feedback to confirm that you, you understand what I'm just giving you. Oh, ooh. Lillian. Yes. So what is flow? Flow is the arrival and wait, the demand. Yeah, the de Okay, the, the flow demand. is the demand, the, the customers per time. Okay. Yes, arrival rate. Good. Uh, Eugene, what is headway? Eugene, are you there? Oh. Um, yes, sir. So what is headway? Oh, wait. The headway is... Um... Yeah. 
Okay, anyone else? Anyone can help me. Anyone can help Eugene? What is headway? Your talk? Uh, the... What is inter inter arrival rate in minutes? Inter arrival time. So like the the what is it the gap Correct. between yeah. one arrival rate to another? Okay, the the bumper to bumper time. Yes. Right. Interval is that? Yes. The time interval between two arrival. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, Darin, what is the connection between flow and headway? Oh, this is difficult. Can anyone solve what is the diff, what is the connection, what is the relationship between flow rate and headway? Anyone? Abel? Uh, I'm sorry, I was at the toilet. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> okay, so what is the relationship between flow rate and headway? And headway? Yes. What is the, what is the relationship between flow rate and headway. Headway is arrival rate. Inter-arrival rate. Mm. I just mentioned. Flow, flow rate is n divided by time. The flow rate is the customer divided by the time interval. Oh, so is flow rate headway divided by time interval? No, it's the other way around. It's the mm. other way around. Okay. So let me share you a whiteboard. Okay. The flow rate is equal to the number of customers divided by the time. Okay. So when we said flow rate average is of course the sum of the flow i, the flow. Okay. The headway is one over the time. Right? So then you have the headway average is equal to one over the flow average. So this is the relationship between headway and flow rate, okay? Is that okay? So, things like this, if, if come out in the exam, you know, you know how to answer, right? So if your average flow rate is 500, a uh, vehicle per hour, what is the headway? If the average flow rate is 600, okay, let me, let me make it clear. If the, if the average flow rate is 600 vehicle per hour, what is the headway? One divided by that, right? One over 600. In seconds. What is the headway in seconds? Uh, six seconds. Ah, huh? six seconds. Lillian, very good. How do you get that six seconds? Can you? One divided by 600 times 
3,600. Very good. Excellent, Lillian. Okay. So, Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well done, Lillian. Well done. Yes. Well done, Lillian. Okay. Okay. So, you see, right? Okay. Yeah. So, flow. Okay. Come back. This one. Share screen. Okay. The happily is just one offer. Uh, one offer the flow. If the rate, okay, the headway, average headway is equal to one over the average flow. Okay. So you remember that. I'm not putting in the slide, but uh, if you don't attend, you will not know. Okay, so practice now. The data collected for queuing study indicate 2,400 customers arrived during 200 hours. What is the arrival rate? 12 customers per hour. Is that so? How do you get that? Oh, wait. Uh, N divided by T, right? Correct. So 2,400 divided by 200. Yes, just 12, right? 12 customer per hour, okay? Very easy. So, Darin, no problem with computation. <laughs> Justified, you know. <laughs> okay. So, we discussed about customer. So, try to identify in your queuing system, try to identify who are the customer in your system. Is that a truck, service, a ship? Is it the buyer, the client, the members? Is it good machines or the calls, the number of bits? Okay. Try to think in the customer identification in terms of their characteristic. Okay. When you think of customer, you think about are they required to join your service? How compulsory is your service? Do you have competitor? Okay. Are they in the same type, for example, belong to the identical distribution? And what is their demand? Are the demand stationary or fluctuated over time? So the characteristic of customers is very important because based on this characteristic, you will design your queuing system. Okay, i give you an example. <clears throat> So if they are required to, your, to join your service, okay, it's compulsory, right? Then practically you don't have competitor, right? So then even if you give very bad service because it is required, then it is okay. okay? They may complain, but they will not go away. Okay. So now another example, if they belong to the same type of distribution or not. For example, uh, there are certain customers which arrive randomly and there are certain customers that arrive uh, at constant distribution. For example, by appointment. These are different type of customers, okay? So in using candle notation, you will have a, oops, sorry. In using candle notation, right? So if you have a, a random distribution of arrival, you will have M. Okay. See, and then uh, certain certain type, and then this is the number of uh, server. Okay. If your distribution of customer is actually deterministic, then you will start to have D. And again, 
uh, this is the surface time distribution, and this is the number of channel, the number of service server. <coughs> so, because they have different type of distribution, then you have a different type of queuing. Next, is the demand stationary or not? For example, uh, in the morning, we'll have certain rate. In the afternoon, we'll have different rate. Okay. Then you need to design two type of queuing system rather than just one. Can you, can you understand this? So the queuing system that we discuss later on is actually based on stationary. If your demand is not stationary, then you need to design for its stationary system. And what is the behavior of the customer? Okay. Are they often to argue and chat with the server? Are they angry if waiting too long? Okay. Do they come in group or in individual? For example, in the restaurant, okay. uh, family restaurant, they come in group, right? So in that case, you need to serve per group rather than per individual. So in that case, per customer, in this case, is one group rather than just one customer alone. So next, what is the behavior of the customer in terms of inter-arrival times? Are they independent or do you have serial correlation? Okay. Do they have correlation with the queuing length or the delay or other feature on the system? I give you, I give you an example. Okay. So for instance, you have a queuing system one. When you finish, okay, you go to the queuing system two. When you finish, again, you have a queuing system three. So in serial. Then the queuing system two of arrival time actually depending on the finishing of the queuing system one, isn't it? They are not independent. Say, for example, if the, the queuing system one is uh, having so much delay, then queuing system two will have idle server. The same thing with queuing system three. Correct? So independent or dependency, correlation between one system and the others also matters in this case. Okay, and what is the demand fluctuation? Which day of the week? Okay, uh, shall we compute only at the peak hour or the, for the whole day? Okay, how about the demand for the big event? For example, the festival. Okay, and what is the distribution of this demand? So these are the important question when you start to discuss about queuing system in terms of customers. Okay, so now I, I will ask you a question. <clears throat> Say you design a queuing system for a road, right? So, Clearly, the demand is fluctuated. Okay? There is what is called peak hour, where the, the demand is very high, say in the morning or in the evening. And there is what is called off peak, where the demand is actually rather low, say like in the night. So now my question to you, do you design it for the whole day or do you design it for the peak hour? I guess peak hours. Why? 
because it's a waste of money if you spend more for it, uh, non peak hours. Or is it waste of money or actually not enough? Mm -hmm. Say if you design it for the whole day, okay, you need only one lane. If you design it for peak hour, you need three lanes. So the question, will you provide one lane or you will provide three lanes? This is a big question because the, the money what you will spend is totally different. Remember the road here, the server are the number of lanes, right? Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> hmm. So you want to design it for the maximum of the demand, which is only one or two hours per day, or you want to design it for the 24 hours in a day? Because if you take the average, okay, in 24 hours, you only need one lane because most of the time, not so not so much but the uh during the peak hour the delay will be so much so the question is will you design for peak hour or you will design for one whole day one whole day why Because, like, not all of the times you will need to, like, uh, like the majority of the time you won't need, like, rush hour is just, like, during, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry, hang on, I think, uh, if we make it a whole day, then if the congestion during rush hour is not finished, like it will be congestion. Yes, instead of one day. hour, if you design it for uh, one whole day, so the congestion instead of one hour, it will finish in three hours. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think then pick hour then. You, you design it for uh, like, yeah. Hey. You are taking IBE, International Business Engineering, right? So there's engineering word there, okay? So in terms of engineering, you start to design in terms of safety factor, okay? So then you design for the maximum, not to design for the average. Do you get it? Okay. Okay, so when you design, for example, you design a building, okay? The average in a year to have an earthquake is minimal, isn't it? But so we must be prepared for the worst. Yes. Oh, yeah. You oh, will not design sense. for the average. You will design for the maximum, correct? That makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you design your house for the average and then the earthquake will not happen anyway in 10 years, right? And when it happens, you die. <laughs> okay. Then you said, oh, destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes. Destiny is always the problem. The scapegoat. Okay. No. Okay. You design not based on destiny. You design not based on luck. You design based on engineering principles. Okay. So you take the maximum. Okay. It's very important uh, engineering principle there. Okay, let's come back. 
Okay. So, but at the same time, okay, you design for the big hour, right? How about the demand for the big event? For example, a festival. Okay. So will you design for the big event in ordinary days? Probably not, right? So now depending on the facility, okay, that you want to design. So in the building, once you make it, it does not change anymore. That's why you design for the extreme, which is for the earthquake. But for a queuing system, okay, you don't design for the big event. You design for the big hour, yes, because it's daily uh, operating system. But at the same time, you don't design for the big event. Why? Because big event probably come once in a year, right? That means you can prepare the big event, say one week or two weeks before the big event. That will be more cost effective rather than you spend the big event, okay, uh, you spend the facility for big event for the whole year. Can you get it? When you design the queuing system, okay, you probably want to design it for the peak hour in a day, not the peak day in a year. Okay. Okay. So next is <clears throat> the queuing occurrence. Okay. When the queuing or the waiting line will happen. The queuing or the waiting line will happen, okay, when the arrival rate is actually larger than the service rate. In this case, uh, the queuing system is called deterministic, deterministic with one channel, okay. So, the queue will only happen when the surface rate, which is lambda here, is larger than the, uh, the arrival rate, which is lambda here, it will be larger than the surface rate, which is mu. So the lambda per mu must be larger than one, okay, when you use the system of DD1. Okay, however, when your system is actually pure random, like MM1, okay, then queuing will happen even if the lambda per mu is less than one. In fact, when the lambda per mu is larger than one in the pure random system, okay, uh, the pure random system cannot handle. So, for example, at the peak hour demand, oversupply will happen, but at the off peak, the queue will diminish. Okay. So, again, I will uh, I will share you a whiteboard here to make you understand. Okay. So, let's say you have. Uh, deterministic system and you have a random system. Okay. So if you have deterministic system, I call this T D one and you have random system, I call this M M one. So you have only one server. Okay. Now, your arrival rate is called lambda. 
your surface rate is called mu. Again, your arrival rate is called lambda, your surface rate is called mu. In DD1 system, the Q will happen if lambda larger than mu. That means lambda over mu is larger than one. In random system, the lambda over mu is always less than one. Can you see the difference now? So this is mean constant. This mean random. So if your system is constant, okay, queuing will happen. This is the queuing. Queuing will happen if and only if the arrival is larger than the arrival is larger than the service time in terms of the average. If your system is random, it's the other way around. Okay. Queuing will happen okay, if the arrival is less than the mean surface rate. In fact, when lambda per mu in here okay, is larger or equal to one, the system breaks down. Okay, this system will break down if the lambda per mu is larger than mu. Uh, what is mu again? Mu is the uh, mean surface rate, lambda is the arrival rate. Ah, okay. Okay, remember this, okay? So what system do you deal with? Is it a constant or random system? Okay? If it is constant system, remember the, the lambda, the arrival rate, must be larger than the surface rate. Otherwise, there is no Q. Okay? If it is a random system, okay, just include MD1. Huh? Okay. So if it is a random system, then, then the arrival rate must be, this is the, the requirement, must be less than, than the mean surface rate, okay? If larger than, it will not uh, make the system correct. Until here. Sir, uh, yes. sir can you give me uh, real, uh, real examples of DT1 and MM1, I'm still a bit confused. Oh, if you don't know, okay, if you don't know, then uh, you think about what is the arrival? Are they random arrival or not? Do they come randomly or not? Okay, then you will say, okay, that is MM1. If you don't know, you just guess it is random, then it is MM1. Oh, I, I, I know the part with uh, M means random, right? And T means constant. constant. But I cannot picture the, the one that uh, the real, I cannot picture an example of a real, uh, real life. Uh, of TT1? No. Uh, the the third one the uh, when lambda per mu is larger than one something like that oh dt1 uh, lambda per mu is larger than one dt1 is example real life example the real life example is they arrive at once see you are queuing in front of your uh, class okay and then the door is open. Yes. There is only one door. 
So at the beginning, you are already queuing in front of the door. That is deterministic. You are already there. So the okay. rate is that deterministic, right? And then the the surface rate is closely deterministic because everyone will will uh, pass the door at almost the same time. Right. And then. Then, uh, uh, in this case, if you have uh, your arrival rate is less than the surface rate, then there is no queue. Meaning, for example, you have only, say, to pass the door, okay, to pass the door, uh, you need half second. And you have only two person or only one person, then there is no queue. Right? Oh. Correct. Okay. If Correct. if the to pass the door is say one third of a second, and there is only two person, there is no queue. But right. pass the door, okay, one third of a second, but exactly there is three person, then there is a queue. Yeah. Right. So, but more than three, again there is a queue. Okay, I understand. Understand. So DD one is clear. Clear. MM1. MM1 is the normal queue that you see. Right? Okay. They arrive at random time. You, you don't tell them, oh, you, know, you will arrive at, at this particular time. Even if you tell them, uh, they're not exactly, say, 9 o'clock. They will not exactly come at 9 o'clock. They will come at 9.01 uh, or uh, 8.59, probably uh -huh. 7, right? Right. Right. So, so uh, a while ago, I was telling the example of the here. DD1, okay, there is no queue unless the arrival rate is larger than the service time, the service rate. The MMS or the MM1 is the, 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 the usual, the usual uh, uh, queuing system that you have, okay? MDS is example of MDS is traffic signal. The fake drive at random, but go out at constant, correct? Correct. Correct. So the example of the MS is appointment system, say doctor appointment. Okay, so you arrive at certain time, but the doctor itself will uh, check the patient at random time of service time, right? Right, well, sir. Um, so now I'm confused about the MM one, the earlier one, when mm -hmm. you said there will be Q if uh, lambda per mu is less than one, and, and right. if it's one, it will crash. It will crash. Yeah. Uh, what's the example? I, I cannot picture it. So, meaning that uh, if MM1, example of MM1, oh, ah, here it is. This is the example of MMS. Oh, sorry. Oh, here. Yeah. So I will, this is the example of MM1. This is the example of MMS. This so is... are you sharing your screen? Oh, I did not share the screen. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, this is the example of M. The pen. Okay, so this is the example of M, M1. This is the example of M, M, S. This is the example of N times or K times. Okay, M, M1. Uh-huh. Can you see that? 
Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so this can be an example of DD1 also, right? This can be an example of DDS, the same diagram. This is the example of N times D1, can be? Mm -hmm. So the same diagram can be M or D, depending on the distribution of arrival and the distribution of the uh, service time. Right. Okay. Is this okay. clear or still a confusion? So don't hesitate to ask, okay? If you if you confuse, so better to ask to confirm rather than you leave it like that. Uh the one i still don't understand the one with um lambda lambda but you will, will you will queue if it's less than one and you will crash if it's exactly one oh uh, look at this look at this uh, example here if if the in this system of a and b okay so if you have only one server or maybe this is c if you have only one server, the system will crash. If your lambda, okay, for mu is actually larger than or equal to one, then what is the solution? The solution is now you have more than one server. Right. Right. So, Again, in, in one server, if you have more than one server, then the system will crash if, uh, say for example, you have S server, S per lambda per mu, okay? Mm -hmm. Or uh, maybe like this. Uh, lambda over mu is larger than S. Is that correct? Correct. So it will crash. So that means you need to provide the number of server which is larger than the mu uh, lambda over mu. Oh. Okay. So it will break if there's you provide just enough surface, right? Right. If oh. you provide exactly enough server break. Okay. Okay. That okay. is the foundation of the uh, queuing rule of thumb. Uh -huh. Okay. So you know the system will break. Then you, you make so that the system will not break. Simply by checking the, the lambda per mu must be larger than the S. Okay. Then. Clear, yeah? Yeah, clear. Thank you, sir. Good, good. Any other question, please? Where are we? So, again, yeah. So, there are two most common type of arrival distribution. One is called M is Markovian, basically a Poisson process. And second is deterministic, which is constant or linear by time. Okay. So if the number of arrival in a given period of time occur randomly and independently from other arrival, and it follow Poisson distribution with mean lambda customer per minute, then the headway will be one over lambda and follow exponential probability distribution. Okay, so this is a special case of Markovian. Okay, so it's a special case. If your arrival rate is lambda, Okay, with this Poisson, right? 
then your headway is one over lambda and must be exponential distribution. Is that clear? Actually, we discussed about it a while ago. Last, uh, I think Lillian solved that problem, remember? The flow is one over headway, isn't it? Mm, yep. Yep, yep, it's exactly the same thing, okay? So, uh, when we said random, it's actually completely random arrival, okay? So, we discuss about its customer, okay? When not in the system, okay? Make the demand on the system at completely unpredictable time and independently from other customer, and they are coming at the same given rate. Okay. So when we said random, be careful here. Okay. So they will arrive at completely different time. Okay. And over time, you will say at the same given rate, constant rate, and they are independent from other customers. These are the definition of random. Okay, let's practice, okay? So say the arrival, the average arrival is 12 customer per hour. What is the average of inter arrival in minutes? Oh, anyone can solve this? The problem is unit, okay? One is per hour, the other one is minutes. So you know the F, the F bar is 12 okay? customer per hour. The question is what is the headway bar? You know, of course, one over F, right? With this, 60 over 12, with this, five minutes, right? Is it clear? Yes. Oh, that the answer is there. Okay, so now your turn. The survey in the highway revealed that the average inter arrival time between car is two seconds. What is the average arrival flow in the car per hour? Oh. Very easy. Anyone who can solve this? Who did not decide today? Darin, can you solve that? I thought you are weak, your weakness in computation. So this is very simple computation. Can you solve it? Darin, are you there? Okay, Darren is not there. Uh, Eugene? Yes, sir. Can you solve? Yeah, I can solve it, but yeah, I don't have the application like the paint or stuff. So can uh, you, can, like... you can have a screenshot. You can have a screen. Whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I just type it? I think it will work too. Right. Okay, you can you can also type it in in the chat. But also find it me. Okay, so we got h h bar h bar equals to 
the seconds. Then that means if we want to have F, we will use one over H. Mm -hmm. So we will get F equals to uh, one, one, yeah, 0 0.5. Then because we want to find it in hour, then we need to times it with uh, one, uh, 3,600. Right. So it will be 0 0.5 times, where is it? Times this, which will be this. Is it correct? What is your answer? Uh, one correct. So 1,800. What is the unit? 1,800 is the? Uh, one, what, uh, one, 1,600. 800, 1,800. 1,800. What is unit? What is the unit? I'm sorry, what's the question again? The unit of 1,800 is? Yeah, uh, I mean the, the question. The, the, no, the co your, your computation is correct. Cars, yeah, cars. Cars, cars per okay. hour. Correct. Car per hour. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Very good, Eugene. Okay. Let's continue then. I will share my screen again. Now, this is what you will do to uh collect the data for queuing arrival rate okay say for example you you want to collect the data for a, a cashier so then you collect for each cashier okay so this is just example say you want to do 12 hour observation for example uh in the weekday and then different observation for weekend so you suspect the behavior of weekday is the same, weekend is different. So then you, you collect two times. Then you collect, you divide for uh, into five minute observation. Okay. So observation number one is between 10 to 10.05. Observation number two, between time 05 to uh, 10, 10 and so on. And then now you observe the number of customer arrive at that five minute interval. Okay. And then at the end of the day, after 12 hours observation, then you will see the total number of customer is, say for example, in this case, 539 customer in 12 hours. Okay. And then what you will do, you will, uh, combine, <clears throat> okay? You will create what is called arrival distribution. So then you, then you count the number of observation in the five minutes interval, okay? How many times in, how many five minutes interval have zero count? Say for example, 255. How many, uh, Number of customer arrive in five minutes, actually only one. Say you have uh, 190 count, the frequency and so on. So how many times in five minutes arrive four customers or only three times? So the total, remember the total is the same, 539, right? So, but you need to get the frequency and then you calculate the frequency relative, okay? And then you can plot. Then you want to calculate the average, right? You want to calculate the lambda. How to get the lambda? To get the lambda, you get the relative frequency. In this case, you see that 47% times zero, 35% times one, 13% times two, okay? 4% times 3, and so on. Then 
you calculate the total, you get 0 0.74. So you can round it to 0 0.75. That means 0 0.75 customer per five minutes. Okay, until here, any question? Is there any question until here? So this is how you will get the arrival rate from the observation. Okay, tell me, now I want to get your feedback. Tell me how do you get the arrival rate lambda from observation? Anyone? Lillian. Just count the car. Find the? Uh, count the car that arrived in one hour or something. In one hour? No. Hey, wait, wait. Arrival rate, right? Arrival rate. How do you get the arrival rate? How do you observe arrival rate? See. One day is 12 hours. You take the average. How do you get the average? From the, from the total customer divided by 12 hours. No, that is not the way to do. Okay. The way to do is to divide the 12 hours into interval. For example, five minute interval or 15 minute interval or 10 minute interval. And then for each interval, you count the number of customers arrived in that interval. After that, you calculate the frequency. Okay, how many times in one interval have one customer, zero customer, two customer, and so on. And then you multiply the, fre the relative frequency with the number of customers in that interval. Then you get the lambda, which is the average. Remember, the average here is not just the total divided by the time, but based on the distribution. Can you, can you, can you get it or not? I will repeat again. Huh? So, Look at this example here, okay? In this example, I observed 12 hour, 12 hour observation in one cashier, okay? So in that cashier, we divide into five minute interval and then for, for each five minute, we observe how many customer arrive. Say only one, zero, two, three, four, and so on. And the total is 539 customers in 12 hours. So the average is not 539 divided by 12. Okay, But the, you need to get the distribution, the arrival distribution. So in this case, how many... Uh, the fre what is the frequency that in five minutes, only zero customer arrive. What is the frequency that only one customer arrive? It is 190 uh, count. Okay. What is the frequency that only two customer arrive in five minutes? In this case, for example, 72 arrive. Arrival in uh, two, two customers arrive okay, in five minutes, happen 72 times. Three customers arrive in five minutes, happen 19 times. Can you see that? Oh, yes, I understand. Okay, and then you get the frequency relative, which is just uh, the count divided by the total. Okay, 
then you start to compute that the frequency relative times the the value okay so in this case you get the lambda which is 0 0.75 customer per five minutes can you see that this is how you get the lambda okay so the lambda can be in five minutes interval or whatever interval that we use yes the interval of observation that you use for example five minute one minute or 10 minutes or 15 minutes usually that is the case right so like maybe uh, uh, we can use this as well uh, like i in my project where the bus when the bus comes with the interval is it yes so mostly it will be zero you see that if you look yeah. at distribution mostly it will be zero no arrival in five minutes mm -hmm. okay and if you plot you will see the the, the plot is uh going down the number or arrival zero is the the highest okay <clears throat> once you make the plot from the observation okay next things what you will do is to check the Poisson distribution so say Poisson distribution this is the formula right lambda exponent x multiplied by exponent minus lambda divided by x factorial so x is 0 1 2 3 and so on so this represents the probability of x arrival in specific time period so let me give example say uh, say we have a, a burger station called technomo burger okay so we analyze the data of customer arrival and we found that the distribution is poisson and the mean arrival rate is 45 customer per 60 minutes so now compute the probability of x customer arrive in one minute period for x one two uh, zero one two three four and larger than five yeah. so in this case you know the lambda is 45 per 60 right so that is 0 0.75 customer per minute then you compute for P0, remember the formula, lambda exponent x multiplied by exponent of minus lambda divided by x factorial. So there. So you lambda is 0 0.75, so you calculate that. 0 0.75 exponent 0 times exponent of minus 0 0.75 divided by 0 factorial. So you get 47.24%. Uh, Again, you calculate for P1, P2, P3, okay, P4, and then for the probability of five and more, how do you get that? You get it from one minus the sum of all from zero to four. Okay, can you get that? So here, this last row, okay, probability of x equal to or larger than five, that means one minus, okay, p0 plus P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4. Okay? Because the total probability must be one, right? Until here, is there any question? So, and if you look at the Poisson probability 
of 0 0.75 here. Okay. Now you compare with the observation. Look at this. This is 47%, 35%, 13%, and then 3%. Okay. Look at the observation a while ago. 47, 35, 13, 4. Almost the same. Correct? Almost the same, right? That means what? That means the, the arrival from the observation matches the, the theoretical distribution of Poisson. Okay? Okay, until here, you know how to compute the lambda and you know how to calculate from uh, both observation and from the theoretical distribution, right? So is there any question? Am I too fast or too slow? What uh, yeah, this is, oh, this is oh, no, normal. Oh. This is normal in my opinion. It's just that maybe because the material that you deliver is not something simple. Yeah. Is it? it is, <laughs> is it not, not simple? In the beginning? Yeah. No. Especially about the material and information. <laughs> but if, if you talk about the number of the calculation, yeah, it's basically just the usual okay. uh, so multiplication. The, and the computation is simple, right? The concept, yeah. the, the one that is not simple. Yes, that's what I mean. That, that's okay. The concept is not simple, okay, because we talk about material and information, okay, but the, the, the computation is rather simple. It's, you already learned this in statistics, right? So, yeah. problem in the computation. Is it correct, Abel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what what a tone uh, now when you do the same thing for uh surface time okay so for the surface time let me share the screen. Okay. For the surface time, again, you, you have a customer per hour. It's called surface rate. The surface time itself is the, the other way around, right? The seconds per customer. So similar to flow and headway. Can you see it? When we said surface rate, that is uh, flow, customer per hour, right? When we said service time, that is similar to headway, it is second per customer. Okay, so the average service time is the total service time for M customer divided by the M customer serve. Okay, so uh, again, we, we have the other name when we said about server okay that is equal to channels that is equal to the number of counters okay basically we talk about the supply side okay the number of channel the number of servers the number of counters this is talking about the supply side okay the the customers is the demand side Okay. The flow is the demand side. Can you can you understand this? Okay. So just jargon, but the jargon uh, make things matter. Okay. So again, uh, the study indicate that the total service time of uh, two thousand four hundred customers was one hundred sixty hours. What is the average service time and the average service rate? 
Anyone can calculate this? I'll, I'll do it. Yes, please. Service time should be. Service time is. 160 divided by 2400. Uh, service time, can you make it in seconds? Times it by 3600. Uh -huh. Okay. Service rate is in hour, so customer per hour. That's easy, right? Yep. Uh, one divided by uh, the result that's of the 2400 divided by 160. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Hey. So about uh, four minutes per customer and about uh, 15 customers per hour. Is that correct? Based on the answer sheet, yeah, correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope you know how to compute, okay? This is rather simple. So you have put the formula, right? Yeah, I think I have put the formula. So, but of course, during exam, no formula. And during the exam, it's open note, open book, open everything. So, should be very easy, right? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should be very easy. Okay. <clears throat> I hope everyone. We only have quiz. Uh, so I only know about the theory equation that you made, and I think your calculation will be your calculation. Your question about calculating will be complicated. Yeah. No, it's, if you read the, the the slide, the the so, uh, problem of the quiz will be exactly the same as in the slide. Probably different numbers, but exactly the same. I will not ask everything that outside of what I thought. Okay, everything will be in the slide. If you don't read the slide, of course you will not know. Okay, okay. thank God. <laughs> okay. Okay, so. Uh, we can even open the Excel and- You can there. open Excel, you can open the website, you can open everything that you want. We just hope that the difficulty level is not that, that high. No. <laughs> uh, I have a teaching principle that, you know, the one that I teach is the one that I test. Okay, I will not asking something outside. Because for me, that's unethical to ask something that outside the scope, isn't it? Right? So, the material that I give, this is the one that, the, the, the test or the exam is basically just a review of what you have learned. It's just forcing you to read, you know. Then uh, the, the group study is forcing you to, to apply what you learn into real life application. That's all. Once you, learn, you know how to, uh, uh, the lesson you need to read and then you apply and then it's up to you to use it in your life later on, isn't it? Okay, so, okay. Next is the server identification. Again, this is very important, okay? Uh, how is the server doing? Okay. Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it uniform? Or is it random? How efficient it is? Is it predictable or unpredictable? Is the server make a lot of mistake or not? Right? And how long do they work? Okay. Uh, is there any training to improve their performance? Okay. Probably. Uh, 
is there any way to improve the performance by say improving the temperature, improving the humidity, improving their working condition? Okay, if this is a human, okay, server. Say, say, for example, if you put the air condition, for example, probably their working condition will improve. Then their uh, uh, service rate will be higher, right? Service time will be smaller. Hey, this is like a simple uh, example of a quiz or exam. Which one is higher, service rate or service time? Which one is expected to be higher, service rate or service time? Service, uh, service rate, of course. Yes. So if you said service time, that is wrong, right? Surf because this longer one. service time means angrier customers, less right. money. Right. 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 <laughs> okay. See. <clears throat> okay. So next. Are all servers identical or not? Some server, okay. Of course, uh, if they are human, probably they are not identical. But check the distribution probably. Uh, check the probability distribution of them. When you said prob, uh, identical, we are not talking about exactly the same numbers, but exactly the same probability distribution. Okay. So, and then <clears throat> check also if the surface time is actually correlated to other aspects in the system or not. We assume independent, but if they are correlated, then probably your uh, queuing theory cannot be used. Then you start to use simulation rather than queuing theory. Okay? So, check also if the surface time distribution is actually stationary or not. By uh, stationary mean, uh, over time they are the same. The surface rate is the same, but in reality, probably your server is getting tired over the time of the day. In the morning, okay, the server, for example, the cashier, will work uh, properly, but uh, in the afternoon, because they are tired, the, so the surface rate is actually getting worse and worse. Okay, so they are not stationary in that case. So now the service time will start when the customer receives the service and the service time will end when the customer leaves the server. This is how you define, okay? How I define the service time. It, the service time will start when the customer receives the service and end when the customer leaves the server. How about the walking time between, you know, from the customer queue until they start to receive the service? Is that part of the service time or is part of the queuing time? Do you get my question? Say, I give you an example, okay? So say you have a queuing like this. This is the one in queue, and you have a several uh, box of server here, okay? This is S1, this is S2. Oh, you're not sharing your screen. I'm not sharing screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why am I not sharing screen? Okay, so <clears throat> I give example. Can, can you see the screen now? Oh, yes. Okay, so example here. <clears throat> I will have, this is the customer. And this is my server, okay, S1 and S2. Okay, so then it defined here that the service time start when the customer received the service, okay? So this is the, the customer who received the service. 
Okay, and this is the, the customer who want to go okay, to the server. So they need to walk, right? My question is, when the customer walk from the queue to the server, when the customer start to walk from the queue, okay, here, to the server, are they part of the service time or are they part of the queuing time? Okay, when they are already here in the server and then start to receive the service, okay, for example, the, the, the server will say, hi, good morning, may I help you? So that is the first time. That is the start of the customer to receive the service, isn't it? So, but, and then it will arrive, uh, it, the service time will finish when the customer leaving the server. My question is not that. My question is, how about the time from the customer in the queue to walk to the server? Is that part of service time or is that part of queuing time? Anyone? What do you think? I think queuing time. For me, it's a queuing time, right? The, the walking time is actually the gray area. Okay. The walking time is can be part of the service time, can be part of the queuing time. Okay. So if you want to make it clear, okay then you put that walking time in terms of service time. Okay. Then the service time will be added with walking time. Then your uh, queuing system will probably perform better. You know why? Because by adding the walking time, okay, now you start to consider to minimize the walking time. So you got it? By including the problem into your system, then you start to think of how to solve that problem. Now, there's another terminology. It's called block time. Okay, the block time start when the customer receive the service, similar to service time, and n, not send, but n, when the next customer the service. This is not send, but n. Okay, so the block time will include the walking time, right? The block time will include the walking time. So there is a time that the server needs to finish the work before it can serve the next customer. There is also the walking time. So sometimes block time is more uh, reasonable than the service time here. Okay? Again, now, uh, service time distribution most common are the three, Markovian, deterministic, and general. And the service rate is called mu, which is the average number of customer, okay, per time period. Okay? While the uh, average service time per customer is one over mu. Okay? If the service rate is Poisson distribution, then the one over mu is exponential distribution. Okay, similar to the flow and headway. Okay, until here is that clear? So, next meeting we will discuss about how to get the service 
time distribution and the surface rate. Okay. So I think it's already past the time today, 35. Are you okay? Sleepy? So the material for the midterm exam will be until next meeting. Okay? Because the midterm exam is on 16. So next meeting still 13. So it will go up to next meeting. Oh, so we have a class next week. We have class next week. Don't you think so? Oh, because our midterm is start at 12. Nine. Nine. Nine? Oh. Nine. Oh, it's up to you. If you don't want to have class next week, that's fine with me. We have no. What, uh, what, what is the class. what is the rule in Petra? During the midterm exam, do we have class or not? Usually no. Oh, okay. So next week no class. I I don't know, guys. I, I already forgot how do we usually run midterm. Do we have class? I don't think so. No, right? What? No class. Yeah. No class. No, we don't. We don't have no. class yet. Okay. We have ho holidays. Stuff. Okay, so next week oh. is holiday for so preparing for the exam. Is that is that so? I don't know. In, in other university have different rules, so I don't know in Petra. If it's exam week, then we usually don't have class. Okay, then then next week no class, only exam on sixteen. Is that correct? Oh, um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, in that case, the material is until today. Okay. 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 Thank you. So okay. in that case, uh, we will meet again uh, on the twentieth. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Oh wait. Twentieth uh, still, still midterm. We still have midterm until the twentieth. So really? Yeah, we have the last day is the twentieth. So, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Do you still have exam on that 20th? Yes, uh, two to be exact. Oh, okay. So we will meet again on 27 in that case. Yeah. So we, we will be, be presenting. Meeting. We will be presenting then. Oh yeah, we will be presenting on the okay. 27. Okay, uh, then we will meet again on 27 and you will be the one who present. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh. In that case, I will reduce the material for queuing. We have two weeks holiday. I thought uh, we will have meeting next week. Well, next week we only have 12 uh, slides, you know. So I think we can reduce that. Uh, well, actually, next week on the 13th, we only have one test, but yeah, we. Do you want to have meeting on 13 or no? Will that be uh will that affect the materials for the finals or for the midterm, yes. For the midterm. Oh, so okay. No, if if next week no meeting, the, so the material for the midterm is until today. Right? If next week we still have meeting, so the material for the midterm will be until next week. It's, if it's next uh, week, we have to reschedule then because it's uh, our time is exactly on the midterm. Yeah. So okay. So okay. I will. I will not have class on thirteen and twenty, based on your. Uh, Request okay, so we will have class on 27 then. All right, okay, All right. that's fine. Okay. So no on 27, you you will have uh, uh, 
workshop. That means you will be the one who present. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. No problem. On the 16, uh, please open your Moodle and then you, you do the exam. I will open it from 8 o'clock. Okay. Until... Or I can open from, from morning. You can you can take exam anytime actually. But wow, okay. For two hours. I see. Okay. So okay. anytime, so, anytime during that uh, anytime on 16th, but two hours limit, right? Right. Anytime from morning, yeah, from uh, say six o'clock until twelve. Is that okay? I will write. So from six okay. until twelve. Okay, so you take the exam and the limit is two hours. Okay, yes, sir. Good enough? <sighs> hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Okay, we'll try my best. So please study hard for the exam. Middle. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So Thank see you, you on the 27 in that case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh -uh. See you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Darin, you are yeah, you're okay. Yeah. Can you follow? Hello, sir. Hey, hi, 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 Lin. I forgot. No. Oh. Uh, for for the OR um, group project, final project, what will I do? Do I need to do it or not? Because, uh, I, I because I you're sitting, so you, you're not... Uh...